You could just feel such an excitement here, amen, and because God is moving. There's so much excitement. You could feel it in the air, in the atmosphere, and, you know, God is a good, good God, amen? Amen. I just want to welcome me and my husband want to welcome all you newcomers. You know, if this is your first time here, we want to say we welcome you. The first five minutes, you are our guest. After that, you become family. So right away, you're our family and we welcome you here. You know, our desire is that as you come, you feel the glory of God in this place, that you come and you your life is changed and transformed and that you come and, you know, fulfill the plan and the purpose that God has upon your life, you know, and so I just want to encourage you that you are in the right place this morning. There is a place for you here in our church, and we love to have you, and um, you picked an exciting time, an exciting time to be a part of our church, you know, um, God is moving in such a powerful way, you know, right now is a season of promise in our church, right now God is moving, and he's bringing growth and expansion, amen, amen. And uh, he's also opened up doors. He's opened up doors for us to begin to walk into our promised land. And, you know, and and it's going to be a place where there's going to be no limits. You know, it's going to be a place where we're going to be able to do more for the Lord. Amen. And step into the more that God has for us as a church, as Victor Outreach Stockton, you know, as a church within our city, be able to welcome, you know, more families, more individuals that are lost and hurting, you know, and begin to give them the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so it's, you're in for a great season of your life. If you stay here committed, um, we welcome you. Uh, maybe you want to share more than what God's doing. Yes, and God has been such a powerful move. First of all, look at your neighbor and say, man, you look good this morning. Man, you guys look real good this morning, man. And it's so good to be here with all of you. Um, and there's so many visitors um, that are visiting us today. So we're, like my wife said, we're so grateful to have you. But like she was saying, listen, we are walking in our promised land, amen. And at the beginning of this year, uh, toward a little bit um, in February or so, uh, we were given the yes to build to purchase Woo! our property, amen. Give yes. the Lord a hand of praise. And the property is going to be this property that we are in right now, amen. Uh, but God has so much in store for our church. And I'm going to be sharing a little bit today about the wells, amen. But in the beginning of the year, around February or so, March, we began to take up pledges. And it's a part of our building campaign. So what's a building campaign? Where we begin to raise finances to buy a building, amen? And so we are ready to buy our building. Uh, the goal was to raise $250,000. Now we said, now we usually we do our pledges all year long, but we have 90 days to try to raise this amount of money, amen? And people made pledges of 10,000, 7,500, 5,000, and some made other pledges as well, amen? How many know that everything counts? Amen, in yes. In a season like this, amen? And so, so far we are so grateful for everybody that's been giving, that has given, and it's going to continue to give. You say, well, Pastor, why is this exciting? Because you ever, have you ever bought a home? Yeah. I mean, I want to buy a home. Amen. Right? Well, guess what? This We are buying our home, amen? Yes. You've been here five minutes, you are moving in, amen? And so it's an exciting time for our church to be able to buy a building because here, there's, it's not just a building, but it's a home where we are able to do all the things that God has for us. Listen, yesterday we were in a neighborhood yesterday, and honestly, we went to go impact that neighborhood, and I believe that that neighborhood yeah. impacted us, amen? We were able to pray for some people and believe for them. Matter of fact, uh, yesterday we prayed for a family, and I think she's watching right now, uh, Sister Karen, amen? Yes. She's there at home watching, so we're going to be praying for her today. Yes. Um, and their family, and then just other families that were there, the, the family that let us, uh, you know, use their front yard. impacted our amen. life in that neighborhood. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that, amen. And, and so know this, that we are still on our building campaign. That's right. We have a, I'm going to give you guys here in a little bit, enough as far as how many days that we have. We have about 30 days remaining to come up with the rest of those finances, amen. But how many believe that God can do it, amen? That's right. But how many know that God can use you to do it, amen? And so this morning we want to um, honor um, some of those, so those that have fulfilled their building campaign pledge. Now this is this giant tube that we have here is the top of this is the goal, amen. Yeah, yeah. Now you say, well, 
we really haven't got that far, right? And you look at it, but we have. Many people are very close to finishing off their building campaign, the vow that they made to the Lord. And so we are getting there, amen? Yeah. And so today, we're going to be calling some people. What they're going to do is they're going to come and they're going to fill this sand. And every sand amount they give are given either at 2500 5000 and 10000 amen? Um, or, yeah, 5000 7500 and $10,000 increments. And they're going to come and they're going to fill it. How many believe that we are going to top this off? Amen. <laughs> Nothing is impossible. Now, if they were cheering for the Niners, like, that's cool, you know? <laughs> you know I mean? Like, that's cool, you know, like, go Niners, you know? But then, how many believe that we're going to walk in a promise? Woo! Yes. Amen. So this morning, we have a young couple that we would like to acknowledge. Amen. Uh, like he said, many have stepped out in faith, and it's just been so amazing just to hear all the testimonies, how God has provided, and you're going to keep hearing them. Even just this morning, someone walked up to me and like was like, how can, how can, you gi how can I give, you know, if it's a large a sum, you know, can I give a cashier's check, can I give this? I say, well, you could give any way you <laughs> like. We accept all things and everything. Not just kidding. No, but, um, you know, just how the Lord has been providing and providing, it's just such a beautiful thing and you know we just continue to know that the Lord is faithful as we step out in faith and we trust in God he is going to move mountains he's going to do a miracle in your life and I challenge you I challenge you this morning to partner with the vision partner with what God's doing in this time and watch God move on your behalf and in your life and in your finances and you know for whatever it is that you feel that man God I need I need a miracle in my health I need a miracle in my kids' life their salvation you know, you know, man, God, I have a heart for the hurting and the people that are lost in this city. And I want to see them have a place where they're going to be able to come and get delivered and be transformed and be set free and have the joy of the Lord. Amen. And so I can encourage you you know this is why you know we acknowledge people just to give you an encouragement to show you that God is able and God is a good God how many know like any time that we have a, a, a way to celebrate the Lord and to bring glory and honor to him you know then we're gonna do it we're gonna celebrate and it's not about acknowledging the person it's about bringing glory to God amen and what he's able to do so this morning I want to call up a young couple uh, Mario and Danielle amen they they stepped out and they were able to fulfill their pledge of $7,500, amen? Now, what they're going to do is, the reason why there's two cups is because we split what they did so they could each do it as a couple, amen? How many, can you reach it? <laughs> can you okay. reach it? Sorry. <laughs> can you reach it? Sorry. That's cool. <laughs> uh, uh, mute, man, man. Mr. Q, amen? Just kidding. But they're going to go ahead and pour it in here this morning. And so we are blessed. They fulfilled their pledge of $7,500, amen? Give the Lord a hand of praise. And the guys, they go ahead and pour. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Can you just take your hands, will you? Yeah. We're going to pray for them here this morning um, as they make their way. We're going to pray that the Lord continue to bless them. Let's all stand here this morning and the Lord will bless them financially. But not only them, but those of you that continue to strive to fulfill your pledge, amen. How many know that God is going to provide a way? As you step out, the Lord will always provide a way, amen. Let's bow our heads. Um, let's say a word of prayer from here this morning. Father God, right now we thank you, Lord God, for this couple, Lord God. We pray that this morning, Lord God, that you would bless them, Lord God. Father God, 10, 30, and 100 fold this morning, Lord God. And they stepped out in faith, Lord God to buy this building, Lord God, as their home as well, Lord God. And as others continue, Lord God, to step out, Lord God, we pray that you bless them as well, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for their faithfulness here this morning, Lord God. And we pray you continue to move, Lord God, in every area of their life, Lord God, bring forth the desires of their heart here this morning. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise here this morning. Love you, amen. You know what I want to do is, I have time, amen. I want to call the worship team back up, amen. I have a message this morning that the Lord has been putting in my heart. You guys mind if I share for something real quick? Um, you know, Pastor, you have the mic, you know. We don't really have a choice. This morning, I want to get ready. to. I want to pray for a couple of people today. But I'm going to do that after the worship song. But, you know, as a pastor, you really begin to 
see what God wants to do. And I want to tell you guys, church, we are in a state of warfare spiritually, amen? Where we are trying to do something that is going to change the history of our church and our city forever. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise that you believe that. You know, and I was talking to someone and they said, you know what? When that time comes that God's going to give you this word. And I was, I was in my office and I was just talking to the Lord and talking to the Lord. The Lord gave me a word. It's a set of words that we're going to be speaking about, amen, that I want to speak to you this morning about to encourage us and to for, keep us on the track of what God has for our church and each of you as individuals. You ever been punched in the face? <laughs> All the time. Well, Lord, help me. <laughs> and I remember, I remember one time I was in karate class and a kid hit me like right by the temple. And you ever been like hit and you kind of like feel like a, a daze, like everything is kind of hazy, right? And you kind of feel like, whoa, right? That's how I felt at that moment when I got hit. You know, he thought back and we were in practice, but I, for it took a minute. And sometimes we're in a battle and it, it gets a, we get hit a little bit. We get a little hazed, a little dazed and confused, right? A little out of breath, amen? When you take a second, you get it back, amen? And you may feel like that this morning. You may have been feeling like that, but I want you to know that God has something coming for you this morning, amen? How many believe that God has something coming for you this morning? I want you to lift your hands this morning, and I want to sing this song. And as we sing this song, I want you to say, Lord, prepare my heart this morning. Let me hear the voice behind the voice today. church I want you to help me as we get ready to go into the word I'm going to pray for the word and that the Lord would minister to you today but I want to pray for just Karen yesterday we were on the block and we prayed for a lot of people and you know thank God for those that went to the rally what I loved was they were connecting with people and you know we were giving out hot dogs we worked with we partnered with OVP they're a great organization in our city um <laughs> And, and we were doing, they were doing hot dogs and drinks, and I was doing snow, we were doing snow cones at the church, but I love making snow cones. I went out to the youth leader, I used to own a snow cone machine. And when we would take the young people in the summer, we put the, we put an inverter on the truck under the hood, and we would plug in a snow machine, snow cone machine, and we'd walk down the street making snow cones, giving them to the kids while we passed out flyers. So that day, yesterday, it took me back to being like a youth leader. So there I am making snow. Pastor, you want help? I said, no, nah, I'm having a good old time making snow cones, 
right? They're like, give me three flavors, mix it up, extra cherry, you know? I'm like, boom, sugar rush, that's your kid. Go ahead, have yours, you know? I mean, I was just making them, man, you know? My wife goes, where's your gloves? I go, man, this is 2024, no more gloves. You know, we're just, <laughs> right? <laughs> just kidding. I didn't have no gloves. But I told my hands are clean, don't worry, girl. All this ice, that last stuff was frozen off, amen? And I had a good time. And then he said, you know what? Today at church, we're going to have some ice and some snow cones. Snow cones Sunday today, Adrian, right? We're going to have some snow cones, right? Everybody gets a snow cone today, amen? I don't know if I'll be making them, but I might try, amen? And so we were there, and we were doing snow cones, and a man came up to me and said, I want to know, I want to give this offering, I want to bless, but I want you to come and pray for my family. So of course, right? That's what we do. So we walked over and we started praying. We talked to Karen for a while and she, man, what a bless her soul, man. She's a beautiful pray, we gotta pray for her, amen. How many don't believe that God can do miracles? She's bedridden. <laughs> Two-time cancer survivor, and she's telling her story. And she said, I know the Lord's not done with me. The Lord's not done with you. How many don't believe that the Lord is never done with us? And it's time our time to go and be with the Lord. And we prayed for her son-in-law, and we prayed for her daughter, and we prayed for her grandson, amen. And then and then we were there, and then, you know, you know, E.G. was like, man. And then, then Beans, on the way after, with the hot dogs, got T-boned. His car got hit, but he didn't stay home. He said, I got to put the car in the parking, in the driveway. You know, kind of did a little bit of stretching of the neck, right? Came to the, came to the rally, started serving hot dogs. He's back there ushering the, the, uh, the door. He looks a little stiff, amen, but he's, but he's doing it, you know, right? And then, uh, and then E.G., you know, they're, they're ministering, and his band broke down. But that was the Lord. She said, look, is that the Lord when a car breaks down? I don't know. I'll tell you this. He prayed for that haunt, that mechanic that fixed his car right there in the front yard. <laughs> him and Beans, him and Beans, Jay took, Jay, Jay took the kids. They were like the babysitter. You know, babysitter Jay took all the kids, right? And then they went home and then, or I think Christy, some of you did. I mean, don't get all my details mixed. There's a lot of stories that happened yesterday, right? But the bottom line, the bottom line is this, is that E.G. and, uh, and Bean stayed back and they prayed for that family. Go, hey, my son is disabled. Can you pray for him? They began to pray for him, right? And then there was, we prayed for some young man. He had about 17 snow cones yesterday. He loved that cherry flavor. R.J., that was his name, R.J., R.J., he had a tattoo, and man, and everything, face, and, but you know what? He had a good spirit to him, man, you know, and the guys are praying for him in the street. Listen, that neighborhood impacted our life, amen? It was a beautiful day. That's what we do as a ministry. It's what we do, and today I want to pray for that block. I want to pray for Karen, amen? We're going to pray for Louis, Mar uh, Louis Martinez as well this morning, and we're going to pray for you this morning, that the Lord would just minister to you this morning. How many came looking for a word? All right, man? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's say a word of prayer, and then we're going to pray for these loved ones here, and we're going to um, get right into the word. Father God, we come before you this morning. Like, we thank you, Lord God, for such a beautiful presence, Lord God, such a beautiful people, Lord God, that desire and hunger for more of you, Lord God. So I pray right now, Lord God, as we get ready to get into your word, Lord God, that you be with me, Lord God, and that you minister to your people, Lord God. But we pray for Karen right now, Lord God, and her entire family, Lord God, that that house will be a beacon of light to that neighborhood, Lord God. That, Father God, that there be a revival in that neighborhood, Lord God. We pray for the man that fixed the car as well, Lord God. We pray for RJ, Lord God. We pray for every single person that we connect with, Lord God, that day in that neighborhood, Lord God. That they would come, Lord God, and know that there's a place here at Victor that could be their home, Lord God. And, Father God, we continue to go back to that neighborhood and minister there, Lord God, and bring your love, Lord God, and share your word, Lord God. We pray for Louis Martinez as well, Lord God. Be with his injury, Lord God. Be with beans, Lord God, in his body, Lord God, after this accident, Lord God. We pray that you be with every person, Lord God, that has a need here this morning, Lord God. But what we pray, Lord God, for more than anything else, Lord God, is a great outpouring upon your spirit, upon your people here this morning, Lord God. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise here this morning. You can be seated. I'm excited today. I'm ministering to this morning um, because, you know, I feel like I, I don't like to miss church on Sunday morning. Actually, I don't like to miss church at all. I only miss it when I absolutely have to, amen. And so this morning, I, I wanted to go, but I, I wanted to minister God's word today. But today, my sister-in-law, Selena, her two kids, Jay and Zeke, are being baptized today at their church. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that, amen. 
I am so, so excited about them being baptized. That's where my wife went right now to go see them and, and celebrate that. How many know that's something that we should celebrate, the baptismal of our loved ones, amen? And so we are excited for our baptism as well. And listen, church, save up your Starbucks money, save up your Dutch Bros money, get rid of the boba, and, and don't get no Dutch Bros, because we're going to have some amazing, listen, we're going to have baptism church, shirts that no one else has. Well, not, that's not true. Because obviously we got the idea from somebody else. But nobody you know, <laughs> right? I don't think anyone in our ministry is going to have these type of shirts. These shirts are going to be very, very unique, amen. So listen, if you want to get baptized, we want you to go to our planning center. You can see any one of our ministers here in the front row right here, and they will be able to also help you to write down your name, take your name, and if you want to get baptized, we're going to be doing some classes so that you understand truly what baptism is, amen. But we want you, now you say, man, it's been a long time since I got baptized, and I, I, you know, I've added some dirt in my life, amen. How many know it's okay to get double dip? You double dip your Oreos, listen, you can get double dip in the Lord, amen. There ain't nothing wrong with you getting re-dipped, amen? Every once in a while, you need another psh, bury the old man again, rise him back up, amen? And so we want you to come and be a part of it, and then we're going to be doing that that Sunday after Mother's Day. We want you to invite your family, and we're going to celebrate you becoming a follower of Christ. And so I'm going to bury the old man, and a new man will be risen up. Give the Lord one more hand of praise for that, amen? <laughs> this morning, I'm prepared to bring this word that God has given me. And it's important for us as a church to understand that what God is wanting to do and is doing in the church is the very thing that he wants to do and can do in your life as well. Every miracle, every blessing, every promise. See, God is doing something in our church. And what God is doing and wants to do in our church, God wants to do in your life and could do it in your life if you want him to. See, because God is going to do what God wants to do in our church. But the question is, is God going to do the same thing in your life that he's doing in our church? See, yesterday we were able to go to this rally and experience these miracles. But you too can experience the same miracles, amen? How do you do that? By going to the rally, amen? How do you do that? By coming to service. How do you do that? By being a part of our house fire. How do you do that? By catching what it is that God is doing in the church. And not only catching it, but allowing God to do that in your life as well. I remember this video that I watched on Facebook a few years ago. And I saw, and I was looking for it to get ready for this message. And it's about this man that had a business that was about digging or about drilling wells. And for people that drill wells, there are certain things that they do and why they dig them and why it's important how you dig a well. And here's a few things that I learned. I learned a lot of stuff about it, matter of fact. But this is a few things that I learned about, dr about drilling wells. Number one, the deeper the well, the more it will cost. The deeper the well, the cooler the water. The deeper the well, the greater the abundance. And the deeper the well, the higher the quality. This morning I entitled my message, oh, Dig Wells this morning. Dig Wells. See, when we look at the Word of God, we find a story that's very significant about digging wells. I think it's important that this morning you're hearing people talk about the digging wells of revival, and that they're, using, they're speaking about, about wells. I remember, do you remember a long time ago, I think in the 80s, when there was a, a child that got stuck in a well and made news across America. This little girl was stuck down there in the city, and people from all over came to try to rescue her from this well. Thank God they were able to get to her, amen? But wells are important. When you look at Genesis chapter 26, I want you to turn there. We're gonna, how many people are okay to read scripture in, Bible, in church today, amen? Well, I got a, quite a few of them for you here this morning, amen? Genesis chapter 26, we're going to start at verse 1. 26 verse 1, and it reads like this. Now there was a famine in the land, besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Ab Abimelech king of the Philistines, in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Verse 3. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. Verse 4. 
I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. Verse 6, so Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister. Because he was afraid to say, she is my wife. He thought the men of this place might kill me on an account of Rebekah because she is beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered, because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the men might well have slept with your wife, and you would have brought great guilt upon us. So Abimelech ordered all the people, anyone who harms this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Verse 12, Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became, the very, became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up, filling them with the earth. Verse 16, then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away from there and he camped in the valley of Gerar where he settled. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Verse 19, Isaac's servant dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the, her the herders of Gerar quarreled with those of Isaac and said, the water is ours. So he named the well Essek because they disputed with him. Then, verse 21, then they dug another well, but they quarreled, but they quarreled, over that one also, so he named it Sitna. Verse 22, he moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it, and he named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in this land. Verse 23, from there he went up to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent and there his servants dug a well. Still with me this morning? Verse 26. Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar with Azazath, his personal advisor, and Philco, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, why have you come to me? since you were hostile to me and sent me away. Verse 28, they answered, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said there ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you that you will do us no harm, just as we did not, not harm you, but always treated you well and sent you away peacefully. And now you are blessed by the Lord. Verse 30, funny how our enemy tries to take credit for our blessings, right? Isaac, verse 30, Isaac then made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning, the men swore an oath to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they, were, they went away peacefully. That day, Isaac's servants came and told them about the well that they had dug. They said, we found water. He called it Shabbat, and to this day, the name of the town has been Beersheba. Listen, when we read this, it was during a famine time. And Isaac finds himself in the city of Gerar, the land of the Philistines. And during the time of the reign of King Amalek, during the this time, God blessed Isaac. When he sowed the seeds, he reaped a hundredfold blessing. He became rich, he grew richer, and became great. He had flocks, herds, many men, and many, many maidservants. The wealth and the greatness were a result of his honesty, of his integrity, of his hard work. He earned it the right way. However, he became, what? The object of hostility. Listen, they were, became envious of him. 
because he had become too wealthy, too powerful. So instead of creating a war or battle, whatever, they asked him to move on. And guess what he did? He moved on. This morning I'm going to talk and speak to you on the four wells that he dug and how it applies to us as a church and to our individual lives. Before we talk about the four wells, here's what some of the things that we learned. Number one, that you can't live off the last generation's wells. Verse 15. See, God has called us. This church has been in existence 39 years. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that. 39 years. We continue to, to win our streets. We continue to evangelize. We continue to build. We continue to disciple. We continue to encourage. We continue to be the church that God has called this church to be. But in this case, Abraham's wells were all filled in. The last generation's wells had been good for them. But many times, the generation's water is either dried up or filled in. Listen, a lot of times, I'm not talking about the previous generation in a way that that is dried up. What I mean by this is that a lot, sometimes what happens is that we keep on living off of what that previous generation did. You know, it's like, it's like being a, a kid that, that's born into money and you never get a job. You just continue to live off your mom and dad's black card. Amen? You say, oh, they're spoiled. They never earned anything. Listen, we have, had, we have a rich history in Victor Irish Stockton. We have great men and women of God that have given, that have evangelized, that have discipled, that have built, that have worked, that have plowed, that continue to pray, that have anointed. Listen, we have a great rich history. Just because those wows were filled, it didn't mean those wows were bad. There's a season and a time in our life where you and I as this generation here right now have to begin to believe and have faith and begin to do something with what God has given us as well. As I tell my son, I'll do whatever I can for you, but my son has to learn. My son has to, to earn something. My son has to, to build something. My, man, my son has to, listen, I'm very hard on my children when it comes to the things of God and it comes to life. How many know that we want our kids to be great? Amen? Listen, God is definitely, we are blessed with a rich history here in Victor Irish Stockton. But you and I, as those that, listen, I'm not from this city originally. I wasn't here when the church started. I wasn't here when they purchased this building. But I walked into an inheritance of an anointing and a spiritual wealth that is beyond any of our years. We walk under an anointing. Listen, Pastor Ed. The one that sent our church here is our Abraham. The one that saw the land. The one that called each pastor to come and begin to do a work and build and believe that this church was going to be a big church, a wealthy church, a launching church, a church that was going to take the city of Stockton. Number two, we learn that enemies love filling in wells. In that second part of verse 15, we realize and we need to realize every day that the enemy hates our well and your well. The enemy knows that the living water is life to us and to you. Listen, the water that is in those wells is living water to us. When we talk about our church and our ministry, listen, it's the, it's the vision that God has given our ministry. It's the calling upon of God that has given our ministry. Listen, we have a thirst for souls. We have a thirst to disciple. We have a thirst to get all that God has for us and to be all that God has called us to be. The enemy knows that that living water is life to us. Without the Spirit of God, without the anointing of God, without the Word of God, without those things, listen, we have no life. So every day the enemy will look for ways to fill in our wells and your wells. Some of you this morning, the devil threw a shovel of dirt in your well. Sucked that water right up. You had a little bit left this morning. And got Thank God you made it to church. You came panting to church. <sighs> Lord, I need something today. Right? Every day you go home, whether it's in marriage, whether it's your children, whether it's financial, whether it's your job, whether it's yourself, there's this battle that you face, and you're like, Lord, listen, stop the enemy from digging, trying to fill my well. Even as a church, listen, when the, the enemy begins to attack the church, the enemy begins to attack the people, listen, we have a well that the enemy is beginning and trying to fill in our church. The devil will do anything to stop the flow of God in our church and in our life. He said, you know, I have to, I'm constantly aware, especially in this season, that the enemy is always 
always trying to stop the flow of God in our life, in our church. I walk around and aware and alert that the enemy is trying to stop what it is that God wants to do. Like I said, not only in our church, but in your life. Number three, open the wells. In verse 18, church, you and I have to be more determined to open the wells than the devil is trying to fulfill, fulfill them. So you and I have to be more determined to open the well in our life and in our church than the enemy is trying to fill it. Who's more determined, the enemy or you? Because I'm a determined person. We are determined to see this church walk into the promises. We are determined to see this church be a church of the city. Listen, Victor and Stockton is a city church. It's not just for the drug addict. It's not for the gang member. Listen, whether you're in the poorest neighborhood or you're in the richest neighborhood, everybody is hurting. Everybody needs Jesus. Everybody is going through something. Listen, we are not, we're not just picking a certain type, but we are not a neighborhood church. We are a city church. We're a city church, but who's more determined? Are you more determined to see your family get saved or is the devil more determined to take your family out? Are you more determined to see your marriage make it or is the enemy really more determined to take your marriage? See, we got to think like that. This is some of you, God's cleaned up, God saved you, and we, we can't get too comfortable because the enemy's always waiting for him. Listen, it's like, it's like in the neighborhood or anywhere else. Right? Someone's always waiting for you to slip. Everyone's waiting for you to catch you sleeping. Right? And the, the enemy's doing the same thing. He's prowling like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Listen, do not let you be the one that the enemy devours. If you have a great desire for the water, then you'll have a determination to dig. One of the main reasons for the lack of power, the lack of anointing, the lack of blessings, the lack of greater, a lack of breakthroughs, a lack of making history in our life is our desire isn't great enough to put the effort that it takes to obtain the all that God has for us as a church and for your life. If there's lack, something lacking in your life, that might be because there's a lack of determination to see it come to pass. Listen, pray, read, give. Go out. Listen, it's nothing like going to the streets and seeing people get saved. If you're struggling, go, go witness to somebody. If you're struggling, go take somebody from hell and take them to heaven with you. There's nothing better than to pray for somebody that has a need. Oh, Lord, I'm so mad. I'm so mad because, you know, I couldn't go and buy that name brand shoe. Until you stand next to the person that has no shoes. Right? We're hurting. We're hurting because someone said, you know, that, that I'm silly. Some people said that you were never going to make it. But here you are. You made it. Listen, we can't be moved by these things because we cannot lose our determination to become all that God has called us to be, not only as a church, but as an individual. Church, in order for us as a church or for you to get what God has for you, you have got to empty our well of everything but God. Listen, you, wanna, you want everything that God has for you? And get rid of everything else. And so most of us said, when we first came to the Lord, we are like, you know what? Take it all, God. Take it all. I just want more of you. And the more that you gave God your old ways, your old thinking, your old habits, your old, all the old things in your house that God did not want, God began to give you more. Listen, God has given you more. You have your family back. Yes, they drive you crazy, but you're going crazy without them. Listen, your family may drive you a little crazy, but it's a good crazy. It's a good crazy. I love that type of crazy. Listen, God has given us and God has blessed us with so much in our life, but the more that we remove it, the more that God does. Listen, another thing that we learn is about the four wells. That's what we're going to talk about here today, the four wells. See, the meanings of the names of these four wells serve as an encouragement to keep us pressing with God. We see every new well has a great meaning, a greater level with God. Because I want you to know something, when we serve God, that we, there's, we, don't, we don't regress. Listen, God didn't call us to go up to bring us back down. The Bible says, we talk about what, that God goes from what? From glory to glory to glory. What does that mean? It doesn't mean he goes from glory and then come back down and then go up. And then go up and then go all the way back down. That's not what it's meant, right? That's not the God but God we serve. 
God has made him go from glory to glory to glory, from greater to greater to greater, from more to more and to more. Listen, our God is a God that never runs out. Our God is limitless. That's why we want to look at these four wells. Number one, we want to look at the well of Essek, the well of contention, verse 20. This is the first well that must be opened in our walk with God. It is the place where we were contented with the enemy. This is a place of early struggles in our lives. It is a place where every day seems to be a battle. Listen, some of us are in our early days of our salvation right now. It's been a battle every day for you to serve the Lord. For some of you in the season that you're in, in this season, listen, when you get saved, there's seasons of your life where the, the beginning of it, it's early struggles and certain things are hard. The cussing is hard. The worldly music is hard. The drinking is hard. You know, stop in the smoking. You went from smoking dope to smoking cigarettes, from smoking cigarettes to vaping. And eventually you're going to quit that as well. Amen? It's, it's a process that you go through, the early struggles of where you get mad so fast and so easy. Everything's an argument. You left the window open. Why did you do that? You have no sense, right? Then you go from that to learning how just to close the window, amen? Right? The early, the early struggle, man, that was a good one. Everyone's, whoa, that's like a hot topic this morning, man. Tonight I'll be speaking on open windows, right? Just kidding. And, and so we have these struggles. We have these struggles, and living for God seems to be a task, and sometimes even discouraging. It seems to weigh us down. And whatever season you're in in your life at this point, but the good news is this, is that God doesn't want us to stay at Essek. In the midst of the battle, God moves us on, and he opens, up, he opens up a new well. Listen, right now you may be struggling, but you can't give in, and you can't give up. I like the message, uh, quitting is not an option, because it's not an option. Listen, you... You should come here every day knowing and you should live your life that serving God, that, that there, quitting is not an option. What am I going to go back to? I have not. If, matter of fact, if I backslid, I don't even know what I would backslide to. I wouldn't backslide to drugs. I never did them. I don't think I'd go back to drinking because I never came from drinking. I'd probably just be a lazy guy at home. Self-righteous, you know, I don't know what I would be. I have no idea. And guess what? I never want to find out. Do you want to find out what it is to backslide? Quitting is not an option. It is not an option for you and I. Listen, you are at the well. You were at the well. And some of you are at the well of that sick, and you're struggling, and you're battling, and that's okay. You want to know why? As long as you don't quit, as long as you don't give up, as long as you don't stop digging, as long as you don't stop moving, you will move on to the next well that God has for your life. We always want to quit. Quit a job. Quit your ministry. Quit parenting. Quit your marriage. Quit talking. Yes? No, I'm just kidding, right? <laughs> Listen, some of us, we want to quit everything. Except for the things that we should be quitting. Amen? Listen, there is no option to quit. But in the midst of the battle, it's interesting what happens. Because in the midst of your battle, when you're struggling, you're battling, it seems how somehow, because you don't quit, you begin to move on. And you move to the, to the wild of Sitna. The well of separation. In verse 21, sin has a great wall, a great well that every Christian has to open in life. It is called in, in, in enmity between us and the world. The world hates us, so we dig the well of separation. It's a hard well to dig. It's a stepping out with God. This well of separation is hard. Can I be honest with some of you today, this morning? For those of you that are beginning to serve the Lord, it's going to be hard to separate yourself sometimes from family that is still influential in your life. Listen, you say, well, why is my disciple tell me I can't go to a family barbecue because you, you haven't learned how to say no to that, that, you know, that beer? Oh, just a little wine. I'm a sipping saint. No, we don't need no sipping saints. And then you become a drunk saint, and then you become a locked up saint, and then you can get, never get out of jail saint. Right? And then you just ain't. <laughs> right? Listen, we tell you that because sometimes we're not ready to handle the influence around us. So we got to separate. So I'm not saying we got to cut them off. Listen, so I, I just got to separate. go my, back to my block and I'm going to win it for honor and glory of Jesus. Some of you might have to go in the home for a little while to separate. 
You say, why? I, I got to go. I got to tell them. Listen, God, you, got, you can go back to your Egypt soon, but you got to go into the home. And you got to get equipped. You got to get trained. You got to get strengthened. You got to get reconditioned. You got to get set up so you can go back in there. And here's the thing. You don't go back on your block by yourself, but you go home. You go to that block with a whole army of people, and they're going to say, man, Moses, I cannot believe that you. Matter of fact, uh, listen, uh, well, man, where's he at? I, I, this is my best, my best analogy. And I know he loves me, so I know he's not going to mind. But I love Aldo. Because Aldo is a giant teddy bear. <laughs> Aldo looks like he don't do an ant any harm. Because he's an ant. Oh, don't kill it. Don't kill it. That's God's creation. Like he's, he's like the most loving guy. He brings you a pastry. Matter of fact, that mighty Minnow Valley, he plans on serving all the men breakfast burritos. That's a lot of breakfast burritos. <laughs> right? He's the guy that holds the sign and says, if you need prayer, come and talk to me at the escalator. And he prays for people. He's a great guy. But I ain't going to tell you his story. That's his tumbler. But he was not that guy in the world. Matter of fact, somebody that knew him was like, man, I didn't even recognize him. Right? When he told me his story, I was like, really? I thought you worked for, like, computer tech place or something, you know? He said, oh, Pastor, you're a client. I'm not a client. That's a compliment. Look what God has done. Some of you, man, you are so bad. Woo! People see you and say, oh, man, the aroma of the Lord is on your life. Before, that wasn't the aroma on your life. Woo, you smell like a dog pound. Like, it was horrible. And I'm not talking Snoop Dogg. I'm talking a literal dog pound. You stink. Didn't take a shower. Lift up your arms. To, the officer told you, put them down. Don't even surrender. Like, my God. Right? But look what God has done in your life. Why? Because you begin to learn to separate. Look what God has done in your life. Because you said, I don't want the world no more. I don't want those ways. And that's the well that's so hard to dig. Because you have to depend upon God to say, I am no longer that person. For some of you, are like, oh, Pastor, that's good for all the new people. Some of you that have been around a long time. Woo! You need to dig the well of separation from your own self. <laughs> You know, separate those multiple personalities. <laughs> on Monday, I know it all. On Tuesday, I'm angry with everybody. On Wednesday, I'm worshiping. On Thursday, I don't know what you are. And Friday, you know, you know the whole week. There's, there's seven different personalities there. Someone's got to get rid of that complacency. Someone's got to get rid of that ind the independence. I don't need the Lord anymore. I got this. I've been doing this a long time. It's why we give in. Because, I, look, look, Pastor, I, I respect your office. That's right. That's when you want to get real professional. I respect your office, Pastor. You know? But I've been doing this a long, longer than you've been alive, Pastor. You know what I mean? Well, it's hard to say that now because I'm 45, so that's pretty old now. Like, by this time, you're like 95 or something, you know? But, I, Pastor, like, when you were still in high school, I was already, you know, winning cities. I was. Right? Because we, we, we lost the fact that God has something for us. Me too. I can't ever get comfortable. I got to make sure I separate. Oh, we're doing good now. No, we're not. We're getting there. And we, we, we get to the good spot, but like, oh, the Lord's like, no, no, that's not good. I want gooder. And I want gooder, good, good. I want that good, good, good. Right? The move keeps on, the line keeps on moving. The line keeps on moving. Why? Because God has. Greater things, but you and I need to begin to separate the things that are stopping us from attaining all that God has. Listen, if you say, well, God, God told me to give this much, then give a little more. God told me to serve this much, then serve a little more. If God told you to go to the streets, but go a little more. Pray a little more. Read a little more. Because it's in the well of separation that God begins to do greater and mightier things. Listen. When we're at this well, we're moving to a different level. Things get left behind. There's the struggles here. But just like Essek, at this place, we tell the devil what? That we declare war on you at this well. And this place is where we say, when we're, out, we're, we're struggling, we're saying, okay, this is a separation. When you separate, you're drawing a line in the sand. I mean, that's your side. This is my side. Have we chosen our side of who we're going to be on? Are we going to serve the Lord for the rest of our days? 
Are we going to rock in righteousness? Are we going to be a men and women that are people of the word of God, not compromising, not altering, not modifying, not watering it down, but being men and women of the word of God and to live according to the word of God? Listen, this is a place where we, we draw the line to say this is where we're at. You see, you may have, the enemy may have filled up our wells before, but we tell the enemy, you're never going to fill these wells up again. Listen, you guys, I remember when I came to a place before I went, I went to the training center, I made my mistake, right? When I was in the training center, I remember telling the Lord, never again will I go back. Never again am I ever going to compromise in that way and jeopardize my salvation. Never again. You have to tell the enemy in your life right now, today, that you declare that the enemy will never, ever fill up my well again. Never, ever again. Give the Lord a hand of praise if you believe that. Listen, church. Then there's the next well. It's the well of Rehoboth. Verse 22, it's the well of room. The Lord has given those before us a place that had room. They had this sanctuary that fits 300 plus in a land that was in the back that we weren't, we weren't able to use, and a warehouse that's been used for storage and for handball and for a variety of different things. But I want you to notice that God showed us this, that he has more room. He said he has more room. Some of you, God has more room in your life for greater blessings. So I had children. That was all the room you had, but now you got grandchildren. More room was made. He said you had a job. But now you got a raise, you got a greater position, and you got a savings account. You got an IRA. You got a retirement fund, 401k. You're blessed. God made more room. Listen, God has made more room in your life for the more things of God, to do more in your life. I want to tell you something that God has given us more room for more things in this building. On this land that he's given us, the Lord, the Lord has enlarged us. He will cause us to be fruitful here. Listen, I want to tell you something right now. That God is not done. When you look at this land, people think, oh, this is, it's just this sanctuary. Do you know that most people I talk to, they don't even know that we have a warehouse back there? For those of you that say, oh, I didn't even know we had a warehouse back there, right? I want to tell you this. That warehouse is probably from this wall to that bathroom over there. It is just as big as this. It's bigger than this sanctuary. Double than this sanctuary. You know what that means? That we don't need that wall, and we don't need those classrooms, that we could take this wall all the way to that bathroom and fit close to 700 people in this sanctuary. Listen, we have a park that we're going to put classrooms. We have more parking space. We have a warehouse for a bigger fellowship, a bigger cafe. Listen, God has told us that I gave you a land that has more room. See, it's hard for, for some of us because we, we, we're so used to seeing the same thing. It's like, it's, like being a, it's like being a bear in a zoo, living in a zoo for so long, and then you get released into the wilderness, and you stay in that same 10 foot by 10 foot square. It's the whole wilderness. Listen, church, you got to open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, and realize that God has given us more. Listen, God has, listen, you think that you're blessed now? Listen, if you continue to go on to the well of Rehoboth, that you will have room for more. That God is going to give you more. If you will make room for God in your life, then God will make room for you. Rehoboth is a place where you get up for another day of struggle, only to find that you have grown to the place where you walk in victory instead of defeat. He said, some of you, some things defeated you every day, they would defeat you, the same thing. But do you realize that you have more room for more victory because you've grown? What defeated you at one time, you have victory in. When you are stuck on worldly music, you don't have, you're not defeated by that anymore. You, you, you become, you've overcome. Some of you used to get angry at the light and you told everybody that you were their number one fan and you would wave that little finger at everybody on the street. Not no more. Now you like give them a little praise you. Pray, I'm praying for you, brother. I'm praying for you. Right? Some of you used to stop at the stoplight and get out of your car and want to fight somebody. But now you get out and you give them a flyer, amen? Listen, God has given you greater victory. What used to defeat you at one time is now your victory. 
church, you got to see yourself as winners. You got to see yourself as the people that have grown, that God has enlarged. God's promise for this church and for your life, if you'll just press on, if you'll live by faith, if you'll give, if you will serve, you will arrive to, at Rehoboth and eventually move on to Sheba. The last well we're going to talk about today is the well of Sheba. The well of sevenfold blessings. See, one of the greatest desires of my wife and I that we have for you is that you would be and that you would drink from the well of Sheba. Listen, Isaac had come to a place in his life that this is the goal of every church and every believer. He has made his share of mistakes. He has lost battles and moved on until he arrives at the place where God has for him. He hears the news of Rehoboth. We have room. He hears the news in Sheba that we hit water. And we're going to be blessed here. In verse 22 to 33, we see the blessing of making it to Sheba. And listen, I want to encourage you, church, that we are right there. We are close to this well. And church, we want you all to make it to this well because it is the best well. The challenge that grieves me the most is that people get so close to it with us and they walk away from the well. We're right there, church. We're right there at this well. God has saved the best for last. And if you don't quit and if you don't give up, your end will be better than your beginning. Listen, we're, 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 we're about to be right there. Right there. I can't wait. When we pull into the parking lot, we can stop hitting that little pothole. Pow. I can't wait till we have white lines in that parking lot again. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Listen, church. Not only for this church, but for your life. I believe as we grow and as we keep on witnessing and reaching the lost, I believe that your families are going to start to come into the house of God. I believe your husbands are going to come to the house of God. I believe that your wives are going to come to the house of God. I believe that your children are going to come to the house of God. I believe that your grandchildren are going to come to the house of God. Listen, you better get excited for the Lord. Listen, church, you can't lose hope of what this well can produce. This is a well that's dug deeper. It's a well that brings greater abundance. It's a well that brings greater quality water. It's a well that we will be able to live off for the rest of our lives. What are the blessings of Sheba? Verse 24 says, don't fear, I am with you. The blessing of your last well is God's presence in your life continually. I believe that when you get to a well, there's a certain place in your walk with God that eventually backsliding is no longer every, even a thought. I, don't, I don't, don't even never know when I thought about backsliding. Like, like I said, where would I go? Really, what would I do if I backslid? I have no idea. You want to know why? Because I never thought it. Some of you, ding, 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 well, you know what I would do. I'd probably go back over there to the neighborhood and, you know, see if my homies are still there. They're not there. They're not there. The last time you gang banged was 40 years ago. You could barely. <laughs> you throw a gang sign, your fingers are going to get stuck. You got arthritis. Oh. What are you going to do? Some of you couldn't even lift up a bat to hit somebody anymore. Like, oh, man, I got cramp. Oh, God, help me out. And then to run in a robbery? Man, you can barely walk from the parking lot to Walmart. You want to run in a robbery? I said, what are we going to go back to? There ain't nothing to go back to, church. There's a point in your life when you have the blessings of Sheba that, listen, the presence of God is in your life continually. Whether it's a hard time, whether it's a good time, whether it's a bad time, whatever, it doesn't matter. The presence of God is in your life. Also, you're about to be multiplied. God's about to give you your years of increase. You won't walk in, and, and you won't walk in lack, but you'll walk in the plenty. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that, church. Okay, let me give you guys a, oh, hold on, hold on quick. Let me give you guys a, like a lesson of church etiquette, amen? Like, when the person says something that's good for your life, you're supposed to clap. Now, I know we're not used to being told, hold on, hold on, hold on don't all of a sudden want to clap now, right? <laughs> Look, I know we're not used to it, being told that you're great and that you're going to be blessed. I know we're not told, used to being told that great things are in store for your family. And a lot of times we lose hope in life and all the good things of God. But listen, don't be a settler. 
So when someone says, hey, you're going to be great, you better start clapping. Listen, God has more for your life. God has greater things for your life. You will never lack, but you'll walk in increase. Your bank account will never be empty. Listen, your children will get saved. Your grandchildren will get saved. Listen, you're going to walk by faith, and God is going to meet your need. Listen, you're going to answer the call of God upon your life. My God, God is good. Listen, real quick, I want to finish up right now. Your enemy, verse 26 to 31, says that your enemy will never be afraid of you. And your enemy will be afraid of you. The devil won't have you on the run. You'll have the devil on the run. Oh, listen, how many are tired of running away from the enemy? How many are tired of living your life scared? Listen, I want you to know that you're going to be able to fight back and you're going to push back the enemy. And when the enemy tries to come after you, you're going to go after him. Why? Because you're a prayer warrior. Why? Because you stand on the word of God. Why? Because you're a giver. Why? Because you have faith. Why? Because you have praise in your body. Man, you don't even know. There's something so good about that water. Lastly, every time you dig, you'll find water. This is the place, the place that God has. In God, we don't live and hit. We don't live, hit, and miss lives. We live lives of godly content. A content of peace and satisfaction in God. Because we're satisfied and content with whatever God has. You want to know why? Because we know that our God is good. We draw near to God and God is there. Shh, listen. As you all stand. This is important, church. This is important. I want you to know something. When you get to the place in the well of Sheba, the blessing of that is that they dug so deep. This well was so deep that the water never ran out. The water never ran out. I want you to know something. When you walk with God and you're at this place of well, your life becomes a place where you have a level of faith to believe. When you can dig that deep, then you know that God is there. You begin to know and see that God, every time you're in need of something, God answers. Every time that you need peace, God answers. Even when there's a lack and there's nothing in the fridge, you already know when you close it, and you go back that God's going to fill it. You know that no matter what happens, that God is going to be there. No matter if you know, whether you're crying, whether you're going through it, whether you're in lack, I promise you this, that God will be there. See, Isaac, before his Abraham's wells were filled, he was a well worker. But later on, a lot of us have been well workers. We've worked the well that has been given to us. But we're not, God has not called us to be well workers anymore. You know what God's called us to be? Well diggers. Listen, you and I must desire to be a well digger. Listen, verse 3 says, Your well becomes a city, Beersheba. It is the place of Isaac's well. Listen, when you begin to dig and you become a well digger, we're not just building a well anymore. We're just not taking blocks anymore or a street anymore. We're going to be taking cities and there's cities around us and we're going to send well diggers to other cities and they're going to dig wells in those cities and they're going to be water, a living water from people who will drink or that come from the world that will have a living water that will last for an eternity. See, this is the place that God reveals. He's already revealed what he did in the last generation. He didn't reveal what he's going to do in this generation. This is where our generation now speaks of its own miracles, its own provision, its own blessing, its own faith moments. You know what I love? And I ain't with this, I promise. And when I talk to this man, so tell me, Pastor Carlos, Pastor, we did this, and they said this, and I remember this happened, and that happened. I stand in awe, like, oh, Pastor. Pastor, well, thank you. Man, that's amazing. We're going to obtain that promise, right? 
he would say, this is what they're probably, we're going to get there, Pastor Ruben. Sister Nancy, we're going to build it one day. Sister Paula, you're going to see it. And we would tell, and I, I could tell, I can only confirm what it was that God already promised. But I was based it off of their faith moment. Can I tell you something? See, Pastor Ruben and some of these ones that are here, that have been here, you've given up stuff and you've given financially a long time ago and you gave. I'll never know what that moment felt like because I wasn't there with you. But today, this generation gets to begin to experience its own faith moment. Where now I come to Pastor Ruben and I said, Whoa, that 10,000 ain't no joke, huh, Pastor Ruben, huh? He goes, yeah, we're doing it though. I'm working it, man, Pastor Ruben, I worked it too. That's what we're going to do now. Now we're going to believe for the park. And we're going to believe for this. And we're going to believe for that. Now I'm not just hearing his story. Now we're in this story together. Listen, now we have our own faith movement. A moment, a faith moment that's going to generate and put generations together. Listen, it's not just the first generation. It's not the second generation. But it's a third generation that will come together and see the promise of God fulfilled. And if you want that same living water, then I want you to come to the well. I want you to come to the fountain and taste of that living water here this morning.